Whenever we talk about uh, the MR scans, uh, the first thing that is usually encountered are the pulse sequences that are used, the T1 sequence, the T2 sequence, the gradient echoes, the diffusion-weighted images, the fat sat images, and the type of fat subtractions that are used. Now, uh, this is a bit different from uh, the conventional CT scans. Uh, for every objective for which we are running an MR scan, we have a different pulse sequence for it. For example, if you need to know the fine anatomical details of the body, you would require a T1 sequence. Uh, to identify the pathologies, uh, you would require a T2 sequence. Uh, to differentiate a pathology from uh, the surrounding fat, we would require a fat sat images. To, uh, uh, to know the very fine anatomical details, like for uh, very small lesions or very small uh, uh, problems that are not causing any morphological change like uh, like, like uh, minor bruises in the TMJ that you would require a T2 star image or a proton density image. Now for uh, identification of uh, the pathologies uh, that are present very close to the ventricles of the brain you would require uh, flare sequences. So for every objective, we have a different pulse sequence. Now, uh, there are uh, nearly more than 100 pulse sequences, uh, pul pulse sequences that are uh, used, in, uh, that are in the MR scans. Uh, some of them are clinically used, and uh, some of, uh, and most of them are for experimental purposes. Now, uh, the three basic. Uh <coughs> Uh, pulse sequences that are used in the head and neck region are the T1 sequence, the T2 sequence, and the fat set images. Flare images and the steer sequences are sometimes required for some pathologies. This part of the presentation that uh, would only include uh, the basic differentiating points between uh, the T1 sequence, the T2 sequence, the fat set, steer, and the flare sequences. How to identify them, uh, what are the clinical implications and how to identify them on the films that are provided to you on the MR scan. And now a little bit know-how about the uh, basic uh, and the basic uh, physics of the uh, MR scans uh, regarding the flip angles, uh, the repetition time, the echo time is a sort of mandatory. You must have a, a prerequisite uh, knowledge on it. However, in this part of the presentation, we will not include any of the physics of the MRI that is used. Let's start here with the basic pulse sequences, the T1, T2, the flare images, the fat sat, and the steer images, mostly used in the head and neck region. Now, uh, the first thing uh, by which you would identify uh, T, uh, either it's a T1 sequence or a T2 sequence is by the films that are provided to you and here it is always mentioned the TR and the TE the repetition time and the echo time as well as the flip angles now for every image uh, they are different and uh, some um, some of the uh, technicians they provide you with the uh, the sequence is uh, of course written over here uh, for example here the sat is written the uh, this is a fat sat image with the tr uh, repetition time over uh, 2000 and the echo time greater than 80 uh, flip angles here are not um, necessarily mentioned here so this is a fat sat image secondly for uh, like uh, fast spin echo the TR above 2000, uh, TE less than 60, and the flip angles here mentioned are the 90 uh, between 90 and 180. Now, <coughs> starting with the T1 sequence. Now, for a T1 sequence, the repetition time is less than 800, and the echo time is less than 30. Okay, but there are some other ways to identify these by looking at the image. And what are these? In a T1 image. Uh, we will take an example of the brain slice. Uh, why we are taking? Because uh, most of the sequences that are studied are f basically f um, the MR was made for the brain. And uh, most of the um, uh, sequences that are identified, uh, they c um, brain is basically uh, a platform for uh, all of the sequences that can be studied on an MR scan. Now for the, uh, as an example, 
brain image the t1 in a t1 image the gray matter outside will appear gray and the white matter will be uh, apparently a bit white or hypo intense as compared to the gray matter so gray matter g for gray uh, g for gray matter w for white w for white matter comparatively and the most important thing is the CSF would be dark. In a T1 image, the CSF would be dark, the fat would be bright, the uh, <coughs> all the water content would be dark, the gray matter would be gray, and the white matter would be white. By white, we mean uh, as compared to the gray matter, it would be hypo-intense. Now, um, T1 sequence is basically for the anatomical details the anatomy of any region can be best identified on a T1 sequence. Uh, for a pathology, if you have a pathology, you compare that slide in which the pathology is visible with the uh, concomitant T1 slide. <coughs> now here, uh, the TR is less than 80, uh, 800, and the TE is less than 80, uh, sorry, less than 30. Here you can see um, another slice of the uh, taken at the uh, at the level of the base of the mandible here you can identify it by looking at the CSF that is surrounding the the spinal cord this is dark so this is basically a T1 image with the fat that is bright here you can see the fat bright and these are the cortices uh, that are not picked up by the MRI these, these will op also appear dark and here you can see the fine anatomical details of all the muscles that are present in this region and these uh, black spots that you see these are basically the arteries the major arteries the arteries in which there is uh, or any region in which there is a flowing blood uh, that is not picked up by the M the MRI and therefore it would appear dark these are called flow voids in the MR scan <coughs> coming to the T2 image the fat would be comparatively uh, darker as compared to the T1 image now here uh, in this case scenario uh, the gray matter and the white matter would be inverse like in the T2 sequence the gray matter will appear white whereas the white matter would appear gray and the CSF would be bright so this is basically an opposite of the T1 sequence now a T2 sequence is basically used to identify the lesions First you identify the lesion on the T2 and then you jump on to the T1 sequence to, uh, to uh, compare the anatomy on the both sides and the infiltration of the tumors or any pathology that you're looking for. So the main point, the bottom line is CSF would be bright, the gray matter would be white and the white matter would be gray. This is opposite to the T1 sequence, whereas the fat would also be white, although it is less white as compared to the T1 sequence. In the T2, the identification hallmark is that TR is more than 2000 and the TE is greater than 80. <coughs> uh, physics, we would, uh, 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 we would discuss some in the some later on in some other chapter of it. Now here is an example of the T2 image. You can see the white CSF that is surrounding the spinal cord. So this is basically a T image and the fat it is bright but comparative to the T1 it is dark. Here you can see the final optical details are better identified on a T1 sequence. So this is basically for the pathologies. <coughs> now this fat sat. Now any lesion that is present in an area where uh, there is a fat present uh, uly pathologies are surrounded by fat in uh, head and neck region or um, certain uh, in, in the in the jugulodigastric region the lymph nodes that are surrounded by the fat so everywhere there is fat present so to differentiate a lesion or the pathology from the fat we take another image that is called a fat subtraction image we subtract the fat from this t2 slice and what we get is the pathology that would appear bright or hyper intense. Now here you could see this is a conventional T1 image with the dark CSF. This is the T2 image with a bright CSF. And here 
you can see uh, the white fat surrounding uh, um, present all over in the face in the head and neck region and here the fat would be suppressed but the pathology that you're looking for would remain bright and <coughs> this would be uh, this would help you in, uh, in identifying or delineating the pathology which you're looking for from the fat to know its exact margin and extension now here is another example of it now the orbit is surrounded by fat now this lesion is present in the nose the maxillary sinus and invading the orbit and as well as the floor of the anterior cranial fossa now if the fat wouldn't have been subtracted from this uh, from this region from the uh, from the orbital region it would be impossible to identify the pathology or the lesion from the fat and knowing its exact extension so what we have done we have subtracted the fat in this fat sat image and here what you get is the white lesion and the exact extension of it could be known now you will compare this image with the T1 image and to uh, to identify the fine anatomical details for what muscles are involved which uh, space is involved either the uh, the lesion is intraconal or extraconal or so whatever <coughs> another example of fat sat the fat has been subtracted and here what you see is the lesion that is involving the posterior part posterior lateral part of the of the tongue and into the um, into the nasopharyngeal region okay third example again this area would be surrounded by fat in a T1 or a T2 sequence but we have subtracted the fat and here what you see is the isolated lesion now the extension of this lesion can be identified very clearly as it has been separated from the fat here you can see the bilateral lymphadenopathy both in the T1 T2 sequence and here the fat has been subtracted you can identify all of the lesions here again now this is basically a T2 sequence here you can see for identification of pathologies we take the T2 image the fat would appear bright as well as the pathology the lesions would appear white as well now this is a and again a fat subtracted image here uh, you can identify the pathology that is invading the uh, the slide has been taken at the level of the <coughs> mandible here you can see identify the lesion that is present white and the rest of the area will appear dark now steer uh, steer is basically one of the types of fat subtraction there are several types of fat subtraction STIR is one of those. Uh, it stands for short time inversion recovery. The TR is more than 2000, TE is more than 60 flip angles between 90 and 180 degree, and the inversion time 120 to 170. Now, here uh, flip angles should be added, otherwise, you would not be able to identify uh, <coughs> it from a T2 sequence. Now, here what you see uh <coughs> all of the fat has been subtracted. Um, in a fat set, or the difference between the fat set and a steer image is that in a steer image, the total fat of the body uh, is, is, re is removed. So this is <coughs> better than a fat set, in which the even the fat from the marrow has been removed. Now, there is an example of it um, in the lumbar region. Here you can see a T2-weighted image. There is so somewhere there is, a there is a suspicion of a pathology or underlying inflammation over there and it which is surrounded by fat now we take a steer image the fat has been subtracted from it and here you can see the edematous tissue so compare it with the T1 and the T2 in the T2 <coughs> clearly we cannot differentiate where, where exactly the problem lies whereas on a steer sequence the fat has been subtracted and the edema is visible over here 
I hope you get the point. So this is another example, <coughs> T1 plus gelatinium contrast. Here you can see the black CSF, the dark CSF. Here in the T2 it would be white and in the steer sequence CSF would be white uh, but all of the fat has been removed. Now flare sequence. Flare sequence is not much used by um, the in the maxillofacial region except for something that is present in the base of the skull or invading through the foramina into the base of the skull. Uh, <coughs> the example, we'll uh, discuss it later on but uh, just for uh, to have a little know-how of the flare sequences. Flare sequence was basically uh, made to identify pathologies that are present near to uh, the ventricles. Now any pathology that would be present near to the ventricle uh, in a T2 sequence cannot be differentiated uh, cannot be clearly differentiated or delineated from that either it is uh, it is arising from the ventricle or in uh, from the subarachnoid space or from the plexus or it uh, how much near is is it present to the the ventricles so <coughs> to uh, to encounter this problem we have another sequence called flare now flare is basically a t2 sequence here uh, how i define it is basically a t2 sequence with suppression of csf signals okay repeat it again this is basically a t2 image with the suppression of the csf signals now everything in it would be appear would appear as uh, like in the T2 sequence, the fat that is mm, bright, the gray matter appears white as compared to the white matter, so a T2 sequence, but the the CSF that should be bright in a T2 image that is dark in a fair sequence. Now, how would it help us? <coughs> Uh, okay, basically in this the T R is more than 3000 and the T is more than 80. Now uh, here you can see the edema that is uh, crossing uh, that is causing midline shift and now in this region that is present very close to the ventricles we cannot differentiate the where actually the ventricle lies. No, uh, either it is the ventricle or it is a part of this edematous tissue. Now in a flare sequence we will suppress the CSF signals and here what we get is the th the right sided ventricle uh, is now vis clearly visible so the edema ex extended would uh, is extending near to the ventricle causing a midline shift and is pushing the ventricle spaces so this is the importance of the flare sequences uh, can be used uh, to identify delineate pathology that has crossed or caused pressure resorption of the base of the skull and pres lying very close to the ventricles. Uh, and secondly, uh, these flare sequences can be used to identify uh, the pathologies at the base of skull, including the foramina, and uh, to uh, look for the dural invasions that are present at the base of the skull. If you like this video, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel for more videos. Uh, the d detailed discussion on the flare sequences, uh, the gradient echoes, uh, the T2 star images, proton density, uh, as well as on the diffusion weighted images, uh, we'll discuss uh, in some other videos some later time. So thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.